so I have been using the ADCC example. I have the ADC data streamer with call packs working. Um, here's the code, and we can see that we are plotting an ADC result, uh, a sample count. Uh, look at the data streamer here, an ADC result, UN16, and a sample count. So the example components are um, like the timer example here. Uh, there's one in the UART, and I've been playing with the ADC. So that's up here, the ADC example. But there are other examples built into Melody as well. So if we look under PWM, we add one of these to our project. Um, that we have a context help question mark. And this comes into the API reference. And in the API reference, we have a number of use cases. So um, signal 25% duty, update on timer callback, duty cycle update on button press, and gradually brightening lead. Uh, how to scale the percentage brightness of PWM based on current value, max value, uh, to match a PWM to a range of a sensor and ADC connected to a part. Okay, so this sounds quite similar. So let's see if we can hook this example together with what we've done on the ADCC. So let's go and have a look at the instructions. Add our PWM 16 bit. So it's a similar kind of look and feel to the the example components, and these were the precursor to the example components. So a, a lot of the example components build on these API reference use cases. So we add a timer. So we have a timer in our example already. Um, we give it a custom name PWM. Uh, that's the default. So and then the timer frequency, okay, 20 milliseconds. This is the same kind of process as in, and then the time interrupt, yes, and select a pin. Okay, and here's some, some code. So we have our ADC, see, um, okay, it doesn't like spaces there. Anyway, so, um, that was one of the settings, custom name PWM, uh, default frequency one kilohertz, okay, nothing to do there. Um, 0 0.02, so 20 milliseconds. So we don't necessarily have to um, change much about our timer. So 02, and we can lower this a bit just to make it more precise. And you can see that we get an exact value if we scale the it down so that that is quite close to what we're aiming for. So we have changed the timer period. I see timer call back 20 milliseconds. So in our code, we have a uh, 100 milliseconds. So we can go refactor, rename 20 milliseconds. This is new. The timer, timer X, that's probably the same as what's there already. Yeah, that's there already. So there's one new function. And there's some values here. To do replace the desired maximum value, ED and ADC connected to a part could be for 100. That's for a 16 bit value, right? So. We're going to just go straight away for 100 for the maximum value. And this is the new function. Set slice. Okay, so I don't know if I've generated yet. Okay, so these functions 
are now here and based on the name of the PWM so all the functions get this prefix of the PWM underscore okay so current max and period count so we're going to call this function and we're going to call it when we have our ADC reeling. So we have a, a current, we have a max, which we've defined already as for one period count to top. So let's just see, uh -huh. this is, so it's always look good to look for the, the comments. So I'll put this just before the callbacks because this is related to interrupt. So we want all our settings done before we start enabling interrupts. Um, so our top period is defined as 100. And um, okay, that's just to get, kind of get a percentage. So we have a top, we have a max, and our count is actually what our ADC result is now. So that is this value here. Dot streamer dot ADC the result. So you can see that we have this um, dot streamer struct where we have a result and a sample count. So we can do it like that. Okay, so the build is successful. Let's just double check um, the settings here. We haven't selected a pin yet for our PWM on a LED. So, and uncheck it analog. So, what we can do here is in up in grid view, use our same LED. So, it's going to complain now because I'm going to select two functions on one pin. So you'll see there conflicts on PWM and that's because it wanted, now it's not complaining anymore. Okay, and on pins, system pins, PWM, uncheck analog. And let's just call this IO PWM so that if we use the pin in a way, then we know what it is. Uncheck analog, name it IO PWM. Okay. So generate again. And let's program. And we're expecting this to, to change functionality on that LED. Build failed. Aha, because we have still trying to do something with the lead. Okay, let's try again. This is much denser. And you can see our LED is brightening and dimming based on uh, what we are doing with our PWM. So basically all that this function here does is there here is spreads out the range of what we doing. The LEDs tend to kind of have a very short range going from completely saturated to not at all. So this function just spreads it out, uh, so it's a bit smoother. So you have something more representative. So in this case, you know, to have a sensor uh, more or less working along with your, um, uh, your part. <laughs>